In a landmark ruling overturning more than 40 years of legal precedent, the Supreme Court's conservative majority striking down affirmative action policies at Harvard College and the University of North Carolina. The 6-3 to three ruling effectively ends race as a consideration in college admissions nationwide. Author Chief Justice John Roberts writing the lead opinion saying the two schools' policies violate the 14th Amendment. The three liberal dissenting justices calling the ruling a tragedy for us all. President Biden also reacting strongly, denouncing the decision. Discrimination still exists in America. We cannot let this decision be the last word. And at the end of his address, President Biden responded to a question about whether this Supreme Court has legitimacy, and he answered, this is not a normal court. To understand the effect that the court's ruling could have here in Minnesota, we sit down with Jill Hadsey. She's a law professor at the University of Minnesota. She provided insight into the possible impacts Minnesota schools and students could see. My co-anchor James Wilcox has the story. Jill, why don't you break down for us what exactly the court's ruling today means for students going to college and for colleges doing their admissions process? Well, the first thing I'll say is that affirmative action only applies to colleges and universities that have selective admissions, which many colleges and universities do not. They're essentially taking everyone who meets the basic qualifications. But selective uh, colleges and universities have, for the past four or five decades or so, taken race into account in, in admissions often, meaning that among the many other criteria they consider when someone when deciding whether to admit someone, they could give someone a boost for being a member of an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. The punchline of today's decision from the Supreme Court is that universities can no longer give someone a boost in admissions because of being a member of an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. What does this mean for those students who may have received that boost, who are from uh, underprivileged groups didn't have some of the privileges that some of those other students in those elite schools do have and are able to use to their advantage? Well, if you're already in college, no one's taking away anyone's seats. You know, that that is uh, said. If you're applying for college, the majority explicitly leaves open the possibility that you can, in an essay, explain obstacles you face, challenges you've uh, surmounted, and that some of those obstacles or challenges may involve experiencing race discrimination. But the court at least says it doesn't want those essays to be a way of reinstituting affirmative action just through another vehicle. The Supreme Court's decision today was all framed in terms of higher education, uh, and it does not address employment. It also explicitly says that it's not deciding on the constitutionality of affirmative action programs for the military academies like West Point. But there are clear implications, I think, for other um, arenas. The current uh, six justice majority on the court does not seem very interested in um, preferences that are linked to being a member of a racial group, suggesting that they wouldn't be inclined to uphold um, affirmative action in the public employment context either. Why is it that now is the time we are seeing these cases? We had Roe versus Wade and now this one dealing with affirmative action. Why are these coming to light right now with the Supreme Court after decades? Well, I think there's two interlinked reasons. One, the membership of the court has shifted and there's a solid six justice conservative slash regressive uh, majority. And two, social movements on the right seizing this opportunity are really pushing their cases. So the plaintiffs in the, in this current challenge to affirmative action